before this video starts, I just want to quickly mention that on October 10th this year, my horror game Mushi's Kitchen Reheated released for free on Itch.io. Act 1 can currently be played for free, the other two acts will be part of the full game when they are ready, so if you are interested in checking out Mushi's Kitchen Reheated for yourself, consider doing so. It would definitely mean a lot to me, and again, it is free. However, you can choose to pay what you want when downloading the game to show further support if you want to. Anyways, let's get on with the video. Hey everyone, I'm Gunnix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot video here on the channel. Or if this is your first time around here, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys 27 simple tips and tricks for when using Godot. This video was originally just going to be 25 tips and tricks, but then I thought of a few extra things to add onto the list as I was preparing to record the video, so now it is 27 tips and tricks for when using Godot. If you've been using Godot for a while now, you may already know some of the tips and tricks in this video, and that's okay, but if you do enjoy or do find this video useful and end up learning something, be sure to consider liking, commenting, and subscribing for more if you haven't already. And let's get right into it. In your scene view, click on the tab in the top left and enable view information and view frame time. This gives you useful information related to your scene. The frame time information gives you info related to your performance of your game, which can be useful for optimization. This includes things like the CPU time, GPU time, and your FPS. And the information down the bottom tells you your coordinates in the scene, the scene window size, how many objects the camera is currently rendering, the draw calls. Overall, this is useful info to have enabled at times. If you ever want to take a look at your scene without all the icons, collision shapes, and grids in the way, just click on the left tab in your scene view and disable view gizmos and view grid. Now you can have a proper look at your scene if you need to. If you have an object selected but it's far away and you want to jump to it quickly, just click on the top left tab in your scene view, and down the bottom of the drop down menu, just press on focus selection and then your scene camera will be taken to your selected object. And just extra thing to mention, if you want to focus on your scene's origin point, you can do that too. You can simply generate a custom collider for a mesh by selecting a mesh you want to generate a collider for, clicking on the mesh button at the top of your scene view, click create collision shape, and here in this menu you can create a collision shape for your mesh. Just choose the type, click create, and boom! Do you have music or sounds in your game that you want to loop? Just double click on a sound in your project and this will bring up a sub menu. In the top left where it says loop enable, just click on the button to tick it, click re-import, and now that sound or music will loop automatically when it's playing. Now that's how you do it for mp3s, but for web files it works a bit differently. Switch from the scene tab to the import tab and select your web file. You should see a drop down menu which allows you to change your sounds loop mode. Once you change it, just click re-import and boom. You can disable individual types of gizmos in your scene. Just click on the view tab in your scene view, hover over the gizmos button, and you'll see a drop down menu of all the different kinds of gizmos you can disable. This is useful if you only want to disable individual gizmos in your scene and not all gizmos. When wanting to add other scenes into a scene, instead of dragging and dropping, you can click on this icon in the top left of the hierarchy in your scene view, and this will open a menu where you can choose what scene you want to add in. Just select your scene and boom! This may be quicker than dragging and dropping depending on your case. You can simply project textures onto meshes by using decals. Decals are useful for things like blood splatter, spray paint, and more. To get out a decal, just click on the plus icon in your scene tab to add a new node to your scene, search up decal, and then add it. Once you do that, you can simply set the albedo texture, and boom, now your decal is ready to place around. If there's a property on a node you don't know much about, just hover over it to reveal the information about it so you can learn more. When scripting, you'll notice a pop-up show up a lot, which can be very useful if you want to check the methods a node may have. 
Depending on what you have selected in the drop down menu, when you press tab, it'll auto complete typing that method for you. If you're trying to look for particular words in your script but are having a hard time, just press Ctrl and F at the same time, and there you can search for the word in your script that you're looking for. You can flip the faces of your meshes so you can change whether you want them facing inward or outward. Just click on a mesh instance, click on the mesh itself, and then in the meshes menu you can find a toggle for flip faces. If you're looking to change up your project settings, just click on project, project settings, and here you'll be able to customize many of the default settings for your game such as the max FPS, VSync, window size, window mode, shadow filter quality, and many many more. In your scene view you should see this icon that looks like a cube. Toggling this determines whether you want to move, scale or rotate an object according to its local or global axis. In your scene view there is a magnet icon. Toggling this icon determines whether you want your nodes to snap or not when moving them. You can increase or decrease the quality of meshes in Godot. Each mesh has their own settings for this. Just click on a mesh instance, click on the mesh itself, and in the meshes menu, and depending on your mesh, you should see settings either related to subdivision or something else that has to do with the quality of the mesh. On capsules, for example, you have to change the radial segments and rings. Make sure when wanting to change the scale of a rigid body that you don't actually scale the rigid body itself, but instead scale its child objects. The reason as to why is because upon starting your game, any rigid body will be scaled back to the default 1 to 1 to 1 scale, so it's important that you want to scale the child objects instead of the rigid body itself. You can switch between specific modes for whether you want to move, scale, rotate, or select an object. You can switch these modes by changing between these four icons in the top left of your scene view. Godot has an asset library that you can go to to download assets for your project. You can visit the asset library by simply clicking the asset lib button at the top of your Godot window. And this will take you to the asset library, where you will see all sorts of assets and tools made by other people for you to use. I personally don't make use of the asset library myself, but you can if you want to. In your scene view, if you click on the tab in the top left and tick half resolution, this will allow you to view your scene at a lower resolution. In the top right of your scene view, clicking one of the access points will make your scene camera view the scene on that particular axis. If you want to reparent a node or multiple nodes, just right click on the node or nodes that you want to reparent and either choose reparent to reparent your node to an existing node in the scene or you can select reparent to a new node which allows you to create a new node to reparent your node to. If you want to change the type of a node, just right click on a node and select change node type now you can select the node you'd like to change your current node to. Whenever you want to test your game in Godot, you have a few options in the top right. You can either select the standard looking play button which starts your game from whatever scene you have set as your main scene, and the fifth icon here, upon pressing that, will start your game from the scene that you currently have open. You can set the main scene for your project by right clicking on a scene in your project folder and selecting set as main scene. In Godot 4 and later, the Z axis is actually pointing backwards. The opposite of where the Z axis is pointing is forward. I don't know if this will ever change, but that's how it currently is right now. Let's say for example you want to change how material looks on a mesh, but if you do make any changes to that material, them changes get applied to other objects with that material too. Well what you can do to avoid that is you can right click on the material attached to your mesh and click make unique, and now this is a unique material. You can do this with other kinds of resources as well, not just materials. Anyways guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. If you want more Godot videos like this, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, so see you all next time, and bye bye